the basement. No, no basement. Okay. Yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome in to Big Valley Living. And I want to thank Maustos for coming in today because we are going to talk about safe. Oh, let's get that sound in. I had okay. to mute my YouTube side because it's like, yeah, okay, same time. Good. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, my goodness. We got lots of fun people in the house. We've got Angela. Thank you, Angela. You were the first one in today. And we've got Ginger from Not For Nothing Homestead. We've got Rebecca, Suburban Hillbilly, and I hope you're feeling better. Yes. Lane. Hi, Elaine. Dark Lord Minute made it on time. Tony. God, you guys, this is going to be fun. Fun, fun, fun. It should be. Now, Vern is on the loose, okay, because it's getting ready to storm real bad outside. So there may be husband interrupt us. And my internet may freeze a little bit. Tony's used to my wacky um, DSL, but we're going to make it work. Well, and you just got a, a, we heard the alert. And for me around here, it's just usually, this is only a test. But for you, it's not quite always only a test, is it? Yes. No, it's, it's usually for real. But my elevator shaft is that way so if it gets bad i'll be in there so it's the only place you can go in an elevated house okay because oh that's true you can't go under it so <laughs> I mean, how far up are you off the ground okay i've got 15 steps you always get this wrong and if Vern hears me corrects me i'm either nine or i'm 16 step i'm nine or 11 feet because you go up an extra foot from what the code is when you built it so you get an additional discount on your wind tail flood full homeowners replacement because when the big one comes, your house just blows off your piers and you're starting from scratch. So that's where Whoa. I am. Yeah. That's on the edge. Yeah, but I'm not in a velocity zone, which would be like I'm on a tidal creek that just slowly rises. Now it's okay. scary as anything because you're watching your little tidal creek come under your house. But your house is literally designed for nine feet of water under. That's so cool. it's not going to be pretty looking from your screen porch, knowing your car is out in your front yard bobbing around. But that's why you over insure yourself. You need the Mach 5 for that. Yes. <laughs> if you have the Mach 5, I'm sorry. You could just go <laughs> underwater and everything would be good, right? Oh, yes, exactly. Any yeah. kiddos out there? <laughs> yeah. And I've got... We've got our kayaks, you know what I mean? If you had to, you just hunker down. But hurricanes, you know, are just loud. And uh, just loud. Have, I think they're just scary. Yeah. And they're we're built to a cat three, but if it's gonna be higher than a cat three, we'll evacuate, but it hadn't happened. So you know, God watches over fools and children. <laughs> you know, so that's how that goes. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Well, I'm glad that you guys are okay. Thank you. Dink and Tank have been there, survived in 2011. Joplin, oh. Missouri. Hey, heaven. Oh. Joplin, Missouri. That got there. There were neighborhoods that were just leveled, weren't there? Yeah, entire cities like Moore, Oklahoma, gone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And see, if we had people go, you need a storm shelter. Hello, I live at the beach. Not when you, you have a surge. Right? Now you're yeah. just gonna drown. It's just going to pop up out of the water if I'm lucky, right? If not, I'm going to be submerged in it, and now it's a coffin. I'm like, don't be in charge of my own security, okay? Because you're trying to kill me. <laughs> and you know, when you say that about insurance, that's really funny because two companies here in California, we were talking about fires before we came on, and two companies have pulled out of California altogether for fire okay. insurance. Yes, and we're already, as residents of the state, we now have like a fund that we pay into taxes to just kind of pay for the extra firefighting and stuff. It's yeah. It's crazy. In South Carolina, there's only two insurers left for wind, hail, and flood. Because if you are familiar with what happened in Katrina, if you don't have wind, hail, flood, when Katrina hit State Farm, which I'll never be another State Farm customer again because of it, but... They went down, so your city block has 30 houses, okay? They're very large city blocks. So Nationwide said this was flood, okay, in their first three houses. And then, you know, Progressive said these were flood. State Farm labeled all theirs wind. So they weren't covered because they had flood insurance. That is a dirty dog thing to do. Uh, yes, yes, but God knows, God watches, 
and lives were changed, right? But that's why we get wind, hail, flood. Pick what you want. We got all of them. It's not fun to pay it every year, yeah. right? But you're not going to nail us on one. So, yeah. you know, that was flood. The levees broke. They didn't have a wind issue. The levees broke. So you catch on to their game. And Florida's um, also losing hurricane insurers. I'm not, you know, they want to hurt us into the cities. I cannot grow stuff on a balcony in a condo, okay? I want my little raggedy two acres. I want to catch food in my backyard. I got my little, you know, I have to protect my gardens from uh, deer. I want to do what I want to do. Hopefully I go for- Oh, you want the freedom of being an American. Hello, you just nailed it. Like exactly, you don't herd me where I want to go. We worked hard to retire at 55 and move somewhere reasonable and affordable. And now I'm 66. If you don't think we were excited to get Medicaid, Medicare, you've got no <laughs> idea because you have to wait till you're 65 and six months. Honey, we danced in there. I mean, we got it on, right? We dressed up the whole thing. I mean, we we did it. And we're like, we're here. We want our money. Okay. So we were very That's happy. That's awesome though. But you paid into it your whole life. Since so. I worked since I was 14. Yep. And then they want to take it from you. So but um, you got to, you know, let us do our own thing. You know, if you want to, I would be happy here in a double wide. I mean, you can put a trailer here up on piers. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever gets you to your dream place, whether it's a river or the mountains or whatever, it, it's our personal choice. You know, it is, it is. And it, what I didn't, you know, one thing I never agreed with was my, my father grew up in Southern Indiana. Uh -huh. And so right across, well, the Ohio River is right there. And so when you cross into Kentucky or back and forth, you'd notice all these houses that were not built up on piers like yours. Yeah. And that darn river would flood every five years and they would just get a brand new house built, brand new house built. It's like, you got to have the sense that God gave a goose to just try, just try yes. to keep yes. yourself out of harm's way, please. I so, always thought we'd want to retire in Texas because they'll never take Texas. Well, God watched over us and sent us to South Carolina because they done took Texas. Okay. You let these Houston floods happen on the Buffalo Bayou, right? That runs right through the city. And then you let them rebuild and you don't make them put up on piers. So I'm like, I call that stuck on stupid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because if our house gets destroyed and we rebuild and the new is 15 feet high. Well, guess what? Our insurance is covering us 15 feet high. But the issue with wind, hail, and flood is you're paying a percentage of the value of your home. It's not like a $1,500 deductible. And remember, you're going to lose your two darn cars. So a deductible on each car, right? You got your ride mower, all those, you know, just insure your jewelry. I mean, just get you an extra rider for that and just let the rest <laughs> of fall, fall in place, you know? If nothing else you can hawk that right start fresh in a in yeah, somewhere exactly. you say it, you know, Billy, put on a pontoon okay. boat and float off down the river to a cage <laughs> you know what i love that song too <laughs> yeah see i didn't want to be around alligators anymore because i grew up with that where you go out to garden and you had to look carefully because they're laying in the sun oh. and so i'm on a saltwater creek they don't like that salty water now if if you paddle 40 minutes in your kayak and turn right on the big water, they're down there in the fresh water. I carefully plan this, okay, because I used to be paddling a, you know, the little pea rogue, right, that was out of wood. You didn't have your fiberglass. We didn't have a John boat. And those beautiful cypress trees that hang over give you a lot of shade, but they also drop water moccasins in your boat. And oh you do a dance of the insane because you're not jumping in the water. Because there's a alligator for you. Yeah, yeah. One. So here I don't have any of that hanging over me. And um, I mean, I was a tomboy and I'm a redneck, but I really do not want to get bit by a cottonmouth. No, I know there's, I can't believe we used to watch that. Um, and now I can't think of the name of it where they would go out Mom, and get, yes, yeah. sorry, <laughs> love that show, love that show. And, yeah. um, oh, I was just like, you know, that is beautiful country that I will never live in. Never. No, and it is hot. And this is what I say, cause I grew up in New Orleans. I was three months old 
And then my dad was in the army and he got stationed at the port of New Orleans. Okay. It is the equivalent of living in your armpit in August after you've been gardening or horseback riding. It's a great place to visit, but they've sold out their ecology for their economy. Yeah. Right? Because you got Shell, Exxon, all that. So it was a great place. It's a very violent place to grow up. Because if you want to have a fist fight and you got people after you, you want me on your side because I can throw them hands. It don't matter how old I am <laughs> because I lived through it and I'm like, yeah. And now I don't even want to go back and visit. I miss the great restaurants and the wrought iron, right? Yeah. And I have permanent indentations in my knees from literally crawling down Bourbon Street after drinking too many hurricanes and singing with the Marines and Pat O'Brien. So we got, I mean, we threw down there. Okay. It was not some clean living, wonderful thing. We threw down there. Well, that's just a party town anyway. Everybody yeah. I know that goes there, they go there knowing that they're just going to go and get to up. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I've heard that they pressure wash the streets every night or every morning because of all of the hilarity that goes on. Yeah. It's called urine. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it's Welcome to Sorry. Sorry. Kill Billy wants to go. I say, I don't even drink anymore because my <laughs> liver gave it all it had. Right. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I lived through there. Why don't I start living right? Okay. I'm just going to do better. Oh, God. Kill Billy's ready to take a road trip and throw down. Oh, that God. is so funny. Yep. That is so funny. And that was one reason we can. We, you know, there's poor and then there's Pope. You know, some of us ain't got nothing. Some of us got a little something. We had everything we needed. We ain't had nothing we wanted. So to send us to a Catholic school on a colonel's pay, he wasn't a colonel. Oh, then. Wow. Your, my mom like made things and sold them uh, in the French Quarter. She would put, you know, canned foods and stuff and sell them. And so... Everything we did, we could get our own food out that bayou, right? We could grow our own food because they did have very good soil because evidently all that flooding really drops in the fertilizer in your yeah. bathroom, right? So that was one reason we can. They called it putting back is because when you finally got something on sale or we traded okra or home canned tomatoes for somebody's chicken, then my dad canned it. So that you always had something put back and it helped you in hurricanes because you'd go without power three, four, five, six weeks. You know, power was not all that in a bag of chips then. Oh, my God. You know, it wasn't as dependable as it is now. We're all mad when it's off for it was off 10 days here after Dorian. And I thought my neighbors were going to have complete breakdowns. I was like, for God's sake, and I'm just over here with my little silent you know, eight solar panels rocking all my stuff. My refrigerator freezers are going and I'm just like, quiet, right? Because I knew when they all ran out of gas in their Generax because it got quiet. Day three, they was done. Oh, I bet. Because that's yeah. all you're going to hear day and night, huh? They yeah. don't have that 10 o'clock rule like when you go camping and you got to shut yeah. it all down for, what, eight hours? Yes, right. yes. It's like, the, you know, that they because they ain't no gas. Why don't we build gas stations, people? Where when the power goes out and you're in coastal places, that somebody can go out there and crank a handle. I mean, you think we ain't got redneck boys who, I mean, they live to help you on the side of the road with a flat <laughs> tire, right? They drive around half the time just on the weekends looking for people to help. Men, women, old people, they'll push the cops out of the way to change your tire, right? I got this. I got this. And dads are out there showing their sons. Why, if you think we didn't have a big cranker that we could then pull gasoline up and into our car and into our Generax, we we got the the young redneck power boys to do it. But no, when power goes out, there ain't no gas. That happened in California in the fires, remember? Oh, yeah. They oh, leave. Yeah. I'm supposed to leave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, does that, we are not, I mean, we try our best, right, as a society to be prepared. But sometimes you don't you don't see the sense in in the lack of thinking about the simple things. And that is, I never even thought about that. Why not have a pump that you could use to manually override? That's why we get our hose and go out suctioning out and stealing gas from people, for God's sake. <laughs> no, I mean, we all do it. So here's the thing. This is the reality for me. It could happen one day that my little can of jars, God forbid, are bounded around in this house in some water. 
At least I had them. And if the <laughs> lid stays on, guess what this food is? Darn good. I can still eat it and, you know, cook it out there on the campfire, my little stove tech or whatever. I mean, come on now. People go, well, I mean, it could get destroyed. Well, yeah, I got solar. I mean, a storm could rip it off my roof, right? And it's laying over in somebody else's yard. I mean, get your crap out of people's yard in a storm. Get yourself up. Get it all out of people's yard. But it is what it is. And then I got insurance. And then I'm going to make my way into a city. You know what I mean? So, yep. see, Derek Power, hand pump diesel in the tractor for years. He ain't scared. <laughs> he knows how to do it, you know? It's true, though. Uh, we don't do anything manually anymore. We simply yeah. don't, you know? I love to be dirty. I like to have my fingernails never oh, yeah. look good because oh, yeah. I use mullet for fishing, and the mullet skin will hold in. Hey, Tiffany will hold in your jig hook like nothing else, but it stains the insides of your fingernails. And uh -huh. people go paint them. I ain't got no job anymore. I was a girly girl. I did my nails. I painted my toes. You do not fish from a kayak. Hang your feet in the water with pink nail polish. Do you? What do you want to bite off my foot? Pick something. This is why you can't take advice from girly women when you live where I would. They're trying to kill me. It's like, no, not doing that. So we just, you can tell what women fish here from how dry our hands are and yeah. how stained our fingernails are. Because mullet, that mullet skin, when you slice them into steak, it ain't coming off that hook for nothing. And that's Is it like shark skin? Yeah, it's mullet skin, which is, um, it's, it, well, it's still like trying to slice through armor. But for whatever reason, it stains you. Indians used to use it to tan some and color some hides. Oh, that's Yeah, cool. mullet are disgusting. They're the chicken of the sea. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to eat one. I mean, you could smoke them if times were real hard, but you'd need to catch them literally and immediately smoke them because otherwise they're just nasty. But, you know, if you're hungry, you're hungry. I was going to say, you know, it's better than uh, Soylent Green. Just Yeah, like exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And what do we hear? Oh, everybody in the chat, I got to Oh, this is funny. Here you go. That's what from happened? Tony. <laughs> what happened? Knuckle Dragon Club members. Yes. Knuckle Draggers Unite. Knuckle Dragon is the way to do it. Preach, Kitchen Kettle. Kettle Kitchen. <laughs> I've always thought he was Kitchen Kettle. Turns out he's Kettle Kitchen. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. put his last name first and his first name last, you know. Yeah. And you have to keep it simple. People complicate things. Oh, I have to wait till I get better Tupperware before I start food storage. Yeah, no. You buy coffee in a can that's a food storage container. Do yeah. you think I go out and buy Deer Park, Deer Park? No, I buy a six pack because I like these top. And then I fill it up for my damn faucet. Okay, ain't nobody got to go buy that. Just make do with what you have. Yes. Yes, exactly. Leanne's here. Hey, I Rena. Know. This is like a lot of fun. Rena's in the house now, prepping for heaven. Jamie's Nadelle and Nana. Hey, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie. Thank you. Hey, Jamie. Yeah. So, yeah, we um, let's talk some safe canning. You want to? Okay, like for sure. I love to can and I like to <laughs> out in California. <laughs> Because I don't want to get ate up with the botulism, okay? <laughs> What's that? That's a big word. Yeah, it's like it's like in the dirt, in the soil, and it's laying on the green beans. And this is what this is the thing that bothers me the most is it's in these books, okay? If people go, I just rinse my vegetables. You just rinse them. I scrub a vegetable down, okay? It tells you right that you've got to have right? Your food's processed in the right way. But more than that, it needs to be clean. You carefully select it and wash it. You peel some foods, right? You hot pack many for a reason. You have to add acids. But you, if you use bad ingredients that are not clean, what is the point of putting in the effort? Okay. Like, first of all, let's establish that this is a holy vessel. This ain't a pencil cup. This is not something for you to put your Bloody Mary in. And if you give a friend food from this and they don't bring it back, 
if they're in a raised house, do you know how easy it is to start a fire under that and teach them a lesson? Because they don't know what's happening under their house. It's wrong. Oh, my God. Okay? But they return it. Not You don't need the lid. You don't give it to them with the ring on. But yep. this is a holy vessel. It's not. They're not just all laying around your house. Okay? Yep. So green beans is one of the riskiest things. Back in my day growing up, you water bath them. You put a tablespoon of vinegar in a pint. You put two tablespoons in a quart. And that's how you can them. Well, now they food has also changed, right? Yeah. But yeah. green beans, we these are our own green beans. What's this? 522, last year's. Okay. I snip them pretty much all the same, but they soak in a little bit of vinegar and nice mm -hmm. fresh water in my sink. And they is clean because... They get dirt on them, like the skins of your potatoes. Yeah. You know, potato. I peel my potatoes. Y'all want to eat your dirt? Get down with your bad self. I ain't doing it. I'm not going to do it. I'll never do it. Okay. So, but we also used to take them and they had a big rubber ring. And after you can them, guess how you seal them? You turn them upside down on the concrete outside. Um, now, in New Orleans, that was tough because it was so darn hot. And they don't just suggest a headspace like, oh, you know, give it an inch and a half or something. Don't worry about it. Just cram them in there and just try and add a little bit of water. You want, you know, half the liquid, half the solid. And if it says one inch headspace, that's science. It's not a suggestion. If you, I do imagine in the pandemic, right? We didn't have to go to the grocery for six weeks. We're old. And we thought, oh, we're going to get yeah. eight. The, awesome. Yeah. The big, well, we went through 165 jars of food and I'm still mad about it. Okay. I don't know what I was saving the food for. Okay. But I still, I got the red ass about it or the blue butt. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Imagine if I did not clean these well and we're using this for our food or I unsafely can some beautiful ground beef, which is not pretty in a jar. Ain't nobody said it was pretty. Now, green beans are beautiful. Meat in a jar ain't so pretty. Okay. But imagine if in the middle of that pandemic where you you can't get to the hospital, right? You're scared to go anywhere. You're talking to your doctor on the internet. If I opened green beans and fed them to me and Fern, and now we both got food poisoning. Yeah. Now we got to either get ourselves to the hospital, get in an ambulance, all because I was so stupid that green beans I grew, I didn't feel like washing properly or I didn't want to do one inch headspace, or I used a raggedy lid. You know what I mean? Or well, God Almighty used a lid again. Thank when you. When people were talking about that, I was like, oh, no, no, yeah. no, no. Or I left the ring on, which can give you a false seal. Water's going to stay behind that. Okay. And then it never got the opportunity to pop off to alert me to bacteria being in it. So I ain't going to save no money yeah. like that by making myself sick. And imagine if it, say it killed my husband. I mean, that's just dumb. So I want to save a dollar, right? Because once you buy the jar, right? And you buy the ring, you good. Yeah. I mean, that's forever if you don't chip it or break it or you don't do something stupid. And when you go to dig the stuff out of it, use a metal thing instead of your plastic. Yes. Not at your jar. Yeah. 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 When yeah. I see people using a knife and, and even when I give things as a gift, I yeah. tell them if you're going to return my jar, which I would very much appreciate. Yes. Please use a plastic utensil to go in and get the jelly. Please, yes. please, please. And if you don't, yeah. that's fine, but keep it. Cause I can't say, I don't feel safe. Yes. Get in there. And you know, <laughs> we used to always throw, use our metal knives until we knew better. Yes. So Once you, you know better, you, you do know. it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It just, and you have to be able to change or I would still be canning green beans the old way, right? And turning the darn thing upside down. I mean, that's how things were. Nothing's more beautiful than tomato sauce. Okay. Oh, now just yes. to give you an example, I actually, because it stays in a dark pantry, I keep it when I bring it out as an example and I wrap it in a dish towel. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything more gorgeous than of tomatoes we grew and then put in there? 
And I'm an ingredient canner. I think you are too. I did. Yes. I love ingredient canning. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with canning some spaghetti meat sauce. I've done it. It gets a metal taste to me. I don't know why. So oh. now I just can the ingredients. So I can open, right, this ground beef if times are hard. And during the big C, the pandemic, there wasn't no ground beef in the stove. Okay, so we used yep. all of it that we had in our pantry. So I can create my own spaghetti in a pot, right? And then I can make it thicker than I can to can it. Because when I've canned my own spaghetti sauce, I've had to add tomato juice to it to, you know, get that half liquid, half solid. Oh. And then when I open that, I just boil it long enough till it cooks off your tomato juice. And then you've got your... Um, thick spaghetti. Right. So I prefer ingredient canning, but there is nothing I don't think is fun. It's not being in the mood and you come home and you just open and your you little salad. A can of soup. Yep. Exactly. And this can be soup or open one yesterday and I turned it into a pot pie. Nice. So it And then everything in this is broth. So when it says, you know, add a cup of water or add a cup of broth, I just strain it. Um, to do it, but you got to know that everything on your shelf is safe. And this is when I got Hecka angry at ball. Oh, because about two years ago, nobody was reading their box, and it says sore sealed jar in your pantry up to one year. Uh -huh. uh, I have stuff in my pantry like chicken broth. Uh, beef broth. Ain't nobody going to tell me it can only sit in there a year. I mean, every every once in a while, I'll can some jam. Okay. But I ain't eating like a pint of jam a month. Right. right. We're too old. Right. People. I can get ate up with the diabetes and can't eat it. So that's when uh, Willow's Garden, who used to make content, found Orchard Road lids, which really? were made always. Yes. And this is, I went on Lisa's panel and I told the far jars, Mike, I know that one of them was messing around with the creator of Orchard Road because their lids are exactly like it. More compound on the bottom. Yep. And his box says exactly what we've all grown up doing, right? Soaking it in that hot water. Place the lids in a pan and bring to a boil to help achieve. I ain't watching this in soapy water. And then what? Flinging it on my countertop. I like it to stay in that hot water. Then I'm using, I don't want to be touching my lid. Let me pick right. up my lid and then lay it on my food. Right. Because I mean, now so, you've negated all of what you've done. Thank you. Because you're walking around, right? I sterilize my whole island, right? Yep. And then real conscious about a dish towel. If I'm doing pork, I put gloves on. Um but I'm so you, glad to hear all this because I mean I felt like I was just being paranoid in my no, kitchen. Nope, because yeah, I didn't about grow it. up with canned goods. So okay. in my family, I mean, we ate canned goods from the store, but we didn't can. Oh, so I got you. I grew up in a in that house that was skeptical about people. You know, you're pretty sketchy there. You're making your own food. Oh. And so I never had it. And so when we wanted to learn, we did there was just before the pandemic and we turned to youtube and we only had a few channels in like 2017 right that we trusted yes yeah and we knew better when we didn't know better yes but i get real paranoid about co cross contamination or any oh, of yeah that. yeah because when we depended on those jars and felt it was unsafe to go to the store i could have made us sick Vern didn't question for a minute because Vern can can also. I mean, it'll help me when I have a big thing. Yeah. Um, didn't question for a minute what was in my pantry. I don't can butter. I don't can milk. I can freeze butter. Okay. I can freeze milk if I want to. I've got powdered Thrive milk. There's, I'm not willing to. I just, first of all, I ain't wasted a holy vessel. Okay. With some stupid milk in it when I could put, you know, it. Each pint will hold a little bit over a pound, whether it's chicken or beef or steak tips, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get the maximum food storage I can get. And for two people, that's, you know, when we make something with this, it's not just two meals. It's usually two meals and a lunch we can 
uh, share because we tend to can mostly in pints if we're just two people. But yeah, Canon gives you so much. We were so thankful for all the pork we had put up, all the beef. When it wasn't in our stores for like seven, eight months, it simply wasn't there. Yeah. You know, because of. Well, so and then it's already cooked too. I mean, if you, yes. when you run out of power, you may not really want to eat room exactly. temperature food. Yep. But you can eat it because, pardon the pun, you can. <laughs> but you yep. can eat yourself and you can eat that. Yeah. And the best thing to do on these YouTube streets, if people are rebel canon, don't go in their comments and go, I don't like you don't want to do that with a butter, okay, or milk. They don't care. And no, then don't. You'll, get, you'll get people attacking you. And that is, this is what we were, we were chatting about in a text message. Um, Clutch Your Pearls, right? came about from people it, part of it it came back but it's always been around with the me too movement of people being conservative and uptight right and that's what they'll do is they'll go oh you're too conservative a canner no i just and it particularly after the big c after depending on every jar of food we have in there anything we had mylar anything we had frozen to know that that was safety, that ain't clutching your pearls. That's being smart because seriously, how hard is it to freeze butter? Oh, it just ain't hard. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Have a great night, Dink and Tank. <laughs> Put a great channel name, Hartley H. Dink and Tank. Yeah. So it's uh, to me, it's just common sense because in the middle of that, we would have been terrified to go to the hospital. People were dying. You walk in, they put you on a ventilator. Ain't nobody got time exactly. for that. Well, yeah. and they weren't letting people in for the most part unless they were getting ready for the old uh, yes. ventilator, you know? Yeah. So you drop your spouse off and you have to sit outside in the car and that's if they'll let you loiter. We we went through the most insane situation that I'll never be caught without my canned food again for. And always thought, gosh, you know, I have so much. Uh, Lisa and I talked about on her channel I look at my quart jars and pint jars, empty ones stacked up without food. Uh -huh. And I'm like, man, you know, I feel bad not having food in that. Those are there with, you know, three times the lids. So that if my chest freezer and my two freezers go down, that I can can the meat and the vegetables and the things that are in there. Or mm -hmm. to hydrate them. Yeah. So looking at empty jars makes you feel funny, but you got to right. have some. You know, because I probably got, man, there's there's a lot of chicken in there. There's a lot of ground beef. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of deer. So you think, I need to have a way to preserve that, you know, no matter what happens. Yeah. Yeah. And Leanne said it's money in the bank. Yeah. You're ready. Yeah, it is. It is money in the bank. Mm -hmm. And not counting on other people to tell you, buy the books. You don't even have to buy this when you can download and put it on your desktop. Yep. I mean, here's your Bible right here. Don't count on people to tell you, oh, it's safe to can that. The only other things you can count on are your extension services, like Clemson Extension Service. Right. Think it has, we all have our favorites. But just like these books, they give you step-by-step -step instructions. So when it says wash and snip your green beans in uniform size, Maybe you should There's a reason for that. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So a clean product is going in that jar. Or you know, well, well, here's a question. I mean, would you dig a potato up, rinse it real quickly, and then put it in the oven, bake it, and eat it? No, because it's oh, gonna no. have grit on it. Yes. Now yes. it's gonna go into your cabinet and sit for maybe a year or two. Yes, till you want that dirt gonna do inside of that can or that mm -hmm. jar. And would you eat a potato that you grow yourself that half of it grows out the dirt and half of it's pale green? Don't eat the green uh, one. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Anybody, I mean, you want to call it. A lot of people yeah. don't know that anymore. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think what we learn in the big C that two thirds of the people don't wash their hands with soap. I mean, you know, we, we were taught how to wash our hands, you know, get in get between the web ends because we were always out in the bayou. The bayou's disgusting. Okay, my water's wicked good, right, with fluff mud. But you've got to scrub a dub. There's snake pee, snake poo, rat poo. It's all out there. 
you know, yeah. raccoons are disgusting, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. So it's all there. So it's just, I don't, I don't find any of the steps um, problematic. And if you in a hurry that day, don't try to can nothing. If you're yeah. too busy to do, just don't start. Don't start what you cannot finish. Don't start nothing. Won't be nothing. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. That takes time. You can't rush taking the, the air out or, you know, letting the air out. Mm -hmm. That's the one reason we do. We use our gauges for that very reason, just to yes. know when we can remove the weight and, yes. we, and give it 10 minutes. We always set our timer, you know, and yes. I, JJ and I learned how to can together. Oh, now see, that's so cool. Yeah. And that, that, Leanne, that's what we do. You sing ABCs or happy birthday. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> this is, and keep your manuals. This is yes. the new scanner I own is 2012. They don't just make up, ooh, storm. They don't just make up these steps. Sorry, it's going to get loud because he had to open the door and it's raining like heck. They don't just make these steps up. They're there for a reason. And they're in your home canon books too. They tell you exactly how to do it, how to vent it, and you know what I mean? How to take your things out of them. They didn't just make these illustrations because, you know, somebody's grandson needed a job, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and people will argue and go, but I need to understand why I vent it for 10 minutes. No, you don't. And then, go, then go to why you vent for Cannon College somewhere. But other than that, why does it matter? It says your canner says vent 10 minutes. So mm -hmm. it don't matter if your daddy did it five or your grandma does it 20. You want to follow that kid. It's all the science is done. Don't just argue, follow it. Who gives two fat figs what? There's a very important reason why. It's called <laughs> safe canning. Do you want to get sick and die? You know, or you can get brain damage. Here's the reality. It's like eating bad tuna. Mm -hmm. It's it all mimics a stroke. Now, now you're not dead. Really? You're, you're actually brain damaged. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you may survive and be all, you know, I got enough problems without, you know, I live to be this old. I don't want to do something <laughs> foolish. Right. I mean, if an aneurysm comes, it comes, but you ain't got to cause sickness. No. You know? Well, no. and I think a lot of people do can to the reason we started canning was because we didn't want all of the additives and we didn't want all of that going on. Yes. And quite frankly, I think companies cut corners too. Yes. It got to a point where I was like, you know what? I can't trust that they're doing everything the right way. Yep. And yep. Um, so we just started canning our own ingredients and we took stock. Okay. What do we eat every week? We're going to need, in fact, JJ laughed at me when I told him I needed a hundred quarts of tomato sauce last year. Love it. So we only did 75, right? We compromised. Well, guess who ran out of tomato sauce about two months ago? And, and we've got a wet year, so they didn't even plant tomatoes until we would normally be picking yeah, tomatoes. Yeah. So we're not going to have any unless we, we can go to Smart and Final, which is a little store, you know, and buy the Mexican Romas. And, and I might get to that point. I just might. Yeah. Because I'd rather do that and can that knowing what went in there, the jars and how it was processed and how it was cleaned. Yes. Then I would, you know, buy in some thing with all the corn syrup and all that crap yeah. in it. I had to subsidize two different years in the 11 here with buying some from the uh, farmer's market. And then this is something interesting. If people would actually read their books, you know, people go, Oh, you know, food doesn't last long in a jar. Okay, this is right from this book. Mm -hmm. Many vegetables begin losing some of their vitamins when harvested. Nearly half the vitamins may be lost within a few days unless the fresh produce is cooled or preserved. Within one to two weeks, even refrigerated produce loses half or more of its vitamins. The heating process during canning destroys from one third to one half of the vitamins A and C, thiamine, and riboflavin. The amounts of other vitamins, however, are only slightly lower in canned compared with fresh. So if vegetables are handled properly, canned promptly after harvest, yep. they can be more nutritious than fresh produce sold in local stores. Wow. Yep. 
So it's right here because people, and that's why we keep our food in a dark pantry, right? It's not sitting out, you know, in our window sill, okay, with the sun coming on it. But, and that's why I, doctors used to say to make baby food, get the frozen food because they literally, Dole or whoever, they flash freeze it in the field. Really? Like, like, yeah, 30 years. Yep. So that that way it locks in the nutrients then it's transported quickly to a very nearby, right, processing facility, and they get it right into the bags. I love to dehydrate the frozen bags and mixed vegetables. Huh. That, a thing of beef tips from a pint jar and some beef broth, I got myself a stew. There you right. go. Yeah. yeah. So people go, oh, no, it loses. It loses some, but it doesn't lose anything that important. Well, you know? and Again, you know how you treated it. Yes. Oh, oh. Yes. I'm going to mm -hmm. pull up a question from Tony here. Oh, God. Is this going to hurt? <laughs> <It's>, oh, God. <laughs> you, we're not starting a bad conversation, Tony. Okay. Tony will take us somewhere, boy. <laughs> well, they haven't tested them yet. We're, we're waiting for them to be tested. Yeah. I've heard JJ's been having email conversations with the university of Oregon because they started a test. Mm -hmm. and now apparently there's a consortium of States, Washington, I think Oregon joined Oregon, Idaho, and I don't know the rest, but they are going through testing of those canners mm -hmm. for yeah. people who are a little nervous about using the old one. Although I was afraid of those canners, my all American canners. I, love them. I trust them. I mm -hmm. love them. We treat them like family. <laughs> yes. You know? Yeah. But it's, it's exactly what she just said. I don't need to have one. I got enough appliances, people. I yeah. mean, you know, I, I got just got enough. I don't need to add another one. Ooh, thunder be shaking my house. Oh my gosh. That is so exciting. Yeah. So I thunder. I'm sorry, but that is loud mouse toes. Yeah. But, he, but here, here is my thing. These people turned on us. Yeah. And with they're only good for one year, right? That's and so that they also, can get more money. Yes. And also, they were not available to do in the big C to even order them online like they ain't got a warehouse full of them. Yeah. Okay. But I will tell you who came and saved the day, right, was these people. Yeah. Oh, so, and I love those. Now we stocked up. Yes. On, we stocked up on the other brand, the original brand, let's say. Mm -hmm. And um, now I've got a lot of them. And I, there was a question earlier about, you know, now what do I do? I don't want to be wasteful. I'll tell you what I do. If I have leftovers or something, I'll use it when I put them in the fridge. I like to use glass jars in the refrigerator for leftover spaghetti and stuff because yes. it takes up less real estate. Yep. And so I'll put it in there if I know we only, you know, we have one more meal. I'm not going to freeze it or anything like that. And I just, I do clean the lid off. I would hot soapy water and I put the flat on there and that's how I'm using them. But I'm not going to can in them because we have lost, I lost more seals like in the last couple of years. And Yes. There's no chintzy on the the sealant that's mm -hmm. on. Yeah, the and compound. You don't get that nice, you know, that you get from a, a well sealed jar. Yes. And do you know how many people did not realize in the last two, two and a half years they changed this? They don't even realize they changed it. So you've always got to read your uh, boxes, right? Yeah. And understand. So, but yeah, I'm with on the electric canner. It's not going to happen for me. I don't need it. I got a water bath. I've got my pressure canner. I'm good. This, this old dog does not need a new trick. I don't know why it's faster or it does fewer. I don't have any interest, but just what you said until um, it's safe. By then I'll be 75 and I won't want to buy another appliance, you know? So. And we have, we did buy one, but it's still in the box. Yeah, because until there's any concrete proof, I think it was more out of curiosity than anything, but we won't use it until there's some sort of um, definitive answer. And even then, yeah. 
just like when I first pressure canned, am I really going to trust it? I don't really know. Right. Yeah. So remember the first time you can something on your own and you sit there yeah. looking at it going, should I eat it? And you're kind of scared. Yes. And you think I'll feed it to yes, my brother. I did that. Yeah. It's yes. Yes. Shelf, I'm like, Ooh, did I do it right? Did I do everything right? We're going to die. Yeah. We're going to die. Or I open it up and it didn't have just the right sound to it. And I get all nervous and everything. You right. Know? And th this would be my answer for Lark's Homesteadish. Thank you. What's it say in any of these books on cabbage? Okay. So now I have for grins tried what you have there. I thought it was horrific. Okay. Just for grins tried it um i don't mind fermenting it pickling it but other than that no so i did for grins with a friend the vinegar the teaspoon the salt and then you let it sit there and i just thought it tastes like crud so and cabbage is so cheap and so easy to grow also well, and I, I'm really excited. We have some crocs around here for pickles because I prefer yeah. to do pickles in the crock. Mm -hmm. And I really, and we just got some fresh cabbage and I really want to make my own sauerkraut, throw some mustard seeds in there, yeah. put what you want in it and get your own flavor profile. And I guess it's not that hard and they've been doing it for hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of years. So yeah. And it's very easy to freeze cabbage, just slicing it. You know what I mean? I never and thought to do that. Thick ones and put it in your sucky bag. Because to me, storing food is dehydrating your sucky bags in the freezer, your canning jars. I love the Mylar for yes. um, any pastas, right? We always freeze our pasta first, like spaghetti or elbows, because they come with bugs. Okay. We've been eating bugs for millions of years. We'll be fine. Um, and then so let them you sit out when you get home from the grocery store. Yes. Put them for seven days in the chest freezer. There's a little spot in the front, you know, that could, and I write a little legend on the top, you know, seven pastas put in Thursday, take out next Friday, just knuckle drag and stuff. Right. All right. 3 PM, wow. anything like that. Right. <laughs> Thursday to next Friday. And then I just set them out in the box on the Island, let them get warm. Takes like eight hours slide them into a mylar bag which a mouse or anything doesn't even want to gnaw through and because right. when we lose power in a hurricane it gets hella hot hella fast okay so you have to open up your windows right you got your screens on but no seams and gnats get in and everything gets hot i went to like day three of no power open our little you know fun size sticker drawer and it all Ooh. melted in the package so, really? yeah, so this, I'm not keeping my spaghetti or pastas in that box that are going to take in moisture when it's 98 degrees outside, there's no power and all our windows are open. Right. Yeah. Which would then build up more, the humidity is in your house, you know, it ain't, yeah. it ain't the coast for nothing. Well, and the glue, doesn't that attract, uh, roaches, roaches and stuff? eggs. Yeah, yeah. The eggs are in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I never really thought about that. Now I'm kind of grossed out. We, um, <laughs> but you we, know what you can do? What? Today you come home with a brown paper bag because I'm yeah. a redneck and I'm Southern and we're not going to put our fried food on paper towels. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it on the brown paper bags. Is I cut out the bottom of the bag where the sealed glue is. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, and then you just have this long roll of yeah. right, cardboard and I just roll them up and then have them in my pantry because there's no glue for them to lick yeah that's the best hack ever yeah it's, it's like use that was use such a great paper. idea yeah so and then if you run out of wrapping paper you got wrapping paper exactly yeah. put, put you some raffia on it and they'll just call it really cool that's what i hate to see when i go to people's houses and they have poopery in these pot purry right little little smelly stuff and then they tie raffia around it and i'm looking at it going <laughs> Did it have a chip or anything? No. And I think this is a friend I don't need. Okay. This is yeah. a dumb friend who has more money than sense because they're just wasting a holy vessel that can hold food on some poopery. It don't matter. I just don't like stupid. I don't. <laughs> I um, absolutely love, I love seeing my empty jars, knowing that I've got plenty of jars. Yes. In oh, 2018, you, mm -hmm. you could find a jar. 
No. <laughs> and I had a friend, a guy that I had worked with for a long time, and he retired. They bought this farm. And in the farm, there was a, a little shed out back. And grandma had canned, like this whole, this whole shed was filled with canned food. Oh, wow. So they cleaned out hundreds of jars. So we know that they were sitting there. They weren't being abused. They weren't being, you know, yes. uh, in any way compromised. Yep. Cleaned them out. And I just went on Facebook one day and I said, hey, if anybody knows of any jars I could buy, let me know. Mm -hmm. He says, how many you want? I said, well, I don't want to be greedy. Maybe a couple dozen. He brought me 200 quart jars. Dear God was watching over. That was a blessing right? and a half. And that was the day that JJ cleared out the guest room closet and built me some pretty shelves for empty jars. <laughs> God had a whole plan and JJ played right into it. Isn't that, that cool, is, though? Yes, that is way cool. Yeah. Just like we've seen people selling brand new canners that they got during the big C, which drove all the price. Like it was $69 for my canner. Now it's $189. Are you kidding me? We you know, got all American like that. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Is there out there giving them away? And you're like, but it's so crazy. The greed and the hoarding and stuff that happened was like, seriously? And People not knowing how to cook. If I could tell you the emails I got, because they're used to eating out three times a day or two times a day. How do I make this? And I'm like, how many people in your family, my husband, I, and three children, and you can't cook? Yeah. And if you could, if I could teach you how to make bread, do you got any yeast? No. Remember, there wasn't any yeast for eight, nine months. Oh, but there was in our house because we buy a block every year and throw it in the freezer. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. But, but the, the scary thing and nobody has learned from it because you see everybody now selling those canners. I got a $50 Excalibur because somebody got it and doesn't like doing it. Oh my time, gosh. Times got better and they could buy the stuff in the store. And, you know, we're just out here like, you know, hose picking up the stuff they're throwing around, you know, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. dishes. What's that? I would say Mimi's dishes. I want a pressure canner. I want a canned meat. That is where it's at, sister. It's all about that. Uh, you need to send me an email, Rhonda. Please send me an email. Um, it's it's just crazy um, that people did forget all of that. And now yeah. I'm to a point where I'm a tomato sauce snob yes. and, a, and a vegetable snob. Because um, when I eat something from a tin can now, I taste, taste all I it. taste is metal. Yes. I feel like I've got a mouthful of tin foil or so. Okay. See, that's how I feel. And when you open your first time your own tomato sauce, oh. it has structure. It's yes. not like tomato juice. If, if well, you, you can pour it, it right there in your jar. Exactly. If you poured it through a little sieve, you'd be like, oh my God, like it is when you separate the juice from it. It's amazeballs. And then you taste it and it tastes like a fresh tomato. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. Canning fresh food, whether you buy it at the farmer's market or, you know, you grow it, it don't matter. Just get your hands on it and wash it, wash it, clean it, yeah. Yeah. you know? Well, we have a little you pick farm, so we'll plan. Okay, this weekend we're going to can tomatoes, tomato sauce. Nice. And we roast our tomato sauce for two two days, full two days. It is so rich. I remember the first time I gave a jar of our home canned sauce to my brother, and he said, Michelle, I had no idea it was going to taste just like tomato sauce. Nice. <laughs> like, what did you think it was going to taste like, you know? Yes. And that gave me really, I had a lot of pride with that. And it was fun to yeah. share it with him, right? And say, hey, dude, you know, and I thought he would be skeptical. And they're yeah. not. They trust, they know that we do it right and they trust whatever we make. And that, that means a lot, especially when it's family member. And what I like is I don't put any spices in it. I find the canon process can exaggerate things, over accentuate it, totally trash it. So I could turn this into a Bloody Mary if I wanted, right? Or I can turn it into spaghetti or chili. I yeah. am not limited by what spices I put in here. Yeah. You know I mean? Now this year, I think we've decided we are going to put up like a couple canner loads of 
you know when you buy that easy pasta sauce because yes. you're, you're beat and you you don't even want to bother spicing it up or anything. Yes. So we'll probably take our favorite pro profile uh, flavor profile and we'll probably do a little bit of that mm -hmm. um, just for an easy night. But yes. for the most part, no. I this year I will have 100 quarts of tomato sauce. And last year we canned our first halves, tomato halves, because you can't dice them up. Right. I don't think I could live without those now. I really don't. See, you get you hooked on your own stuff. This is the greatest thing I have ever purchased to change my tomato life. This Vittorio, I used to have the hand, the, the number yeah. breaker one, you know, that you had to do. Yeah. This thing and Vern cranks it for me and it separates out the juice from the pulp. From the one of those. I watched you do that too. Of yes. course, is that effective? Oh my God, it was brilliant. Thank yeah. you, Angela. Yep, it's <laughs> way fun. But yeah, and see, I'd rather have that than an electric canner with a limited budget. Does that make sense? Yep. Or, you know what I mean? If I can't get the book, I can download it. And that's the easiest thing to do is when we started accumulating the things we wanted, uh, Vern was still working and said, get me the prices off of Amazon of what your dream things are. I mean, jars I could get at an Ace or a yard sale, right? Yeah, right. We started wanting to really accumulate things. This is how, okay, so this out of this paycheck, it might be four paychecks away. You can spend that 69 that you wanted for the canner. And then yep. you might wait um, six weeks to be able to get this one. But that way our budget didn't feel it. And the other thing when you have a Presto is I always have these sealing kits so that if in the middle of the pandemic my mm -hmm. were to change, I've still got two of these as backups. So when I use one, I order another one. They're cheap. You got them on hand and my canner will always run, you know? Yeah. And you now I actually got a gifted uh, a Presto canner. <gasps> and it's like the kindest thing. I mean, but I've got two All Americans. I'm like, oh, do I? I don't need three canners. I don't have that many burners. Right. But three is not bad. What if one got sick? Well, that's yeah. What if you got burgled and they stole one? What, you know, two is one, one is none. No, that's true. That's yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's, it's very, very nice. Um, yes. I, um, but I think having those rings, that was the first thing when I, when that got gifted to me was I need to get new rings. Does it have that little tiny, that little tiny guy that goes up in the very top? I don't know what that's for. I know it's like an escape valve. It's like a little tiny round black thing. Okay. The like pressure a, relief valve, the emergency relief valve. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't know the name of it. You know, just for you to know, I made a whole video on how to use the correct terms for the stuff on your canner. Because if I could tell you the crackhead emails I get, hey, mouse, let me ask you, when I use that flat thing and the push-up rubber thing, do they, do they have to go down in different ways? Okay. Listen, and this is for you. I hope to help you. Billy is here. First of all, this is a ring, okay? <laughs> it's a cannon ring. This is not a flat, it's not the flat thing. It is a cannon lid, okay? <laughs> so that when people say, do I have to leave the round, can I leave the round thing on after I've made food and let it sit, canned food and let it sit out 24 hours? I'm, I'm not going to assume that the round thing is you're asking me if you could leave the ring on the jar after it sat out unmolested for 24 hours. Not the doofwatchy, the thingamajig. Okay. So <laughs> that rubbery let's, thing go. let's go here. Okay. This will oh, actually. You know what I'm going to be watching. I want everybody to go watch Mouse Toe's show or her video about proper terms after yes. this. Please. Talk to your canner with real words. It deserves them. So, yeah, like the vent pipe, right? Is kind of in that that little little rubber thing. When I replace my O-ring, it comes with a new one. It's your emergency relief because that thing will pop out like an Audi belly button on a man yeah. with a bad hernia. Okay, I mean it will pop out like a button coming off a fat girl when she sneezes. Okay, so that's what you want to make sure of. And in the front of your book, it shows you pictures 
of what you have. Then when you send people emails and they're trying to help you, they can freaking understand what you're asking. Because I'm afraid to answer the question when the round thing is not the ring because they can't make words. Yeah. I get upset about pressure canner. I think it's, it's important to say the words right. Look, before using your canner for the first time, learn to properly write, write the freaking parts on it. That's yeah. what it says right there. The freaking parts. <laughs> this guy who wrote this is as mad as I am when he wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. See, look. Oh, God, they're pictures. Right? But it still say vent through the vent pipe for 10 minutes. Not the pointy thing. <laughs> okay. Not the not rubber thing, but the metal thing doesn't say that. Okay. <laughs> I have to talk the language. Oh, the vent cover lock that I used to call the pet cock, but it's not because I could never remember the vent cover lock. I had a post-it note on my um, hood of my stove for a long time because it made me mental because I get, I don't like people calling things the wrong thing. And I go, it's the pet cock, but it's not because damn it. I can't remember the name. So I had a post-it note that was used to be blue and then it became pale white from just getting <laughs> out from the damn light bulb. But anyway, yeah. I okay. love that. The emergency, but when that thing pops, it will pop out, shoot up under your vent hood and let a whole lot of steam come out. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> you did that for, you did that for the benefit well, of everybody else. Well, no, before they had um the okay like when you use okay all right you know how people call this the rocker the jiggler uh -huh. makes uh -huh. me miss it's a weighted gauge weighted see now that's one of the terms i actually do know okay look at you get down with your bad self <laughs> because when you go to look at how long you're supposed to pressure can something or what your pound is it's actually in this book Weighted gauge pressure canner, and above it is dial gauge. Yeah, because it's but everybody called it the jiggler so long, and I got emails going. I can't find the jiggler because that ain't what the hell it's called. <laughs> so, do you have your manual? Go look at what it's called. But I'd get an email two days later. It's weighted pressure gauge. Amazon. It's your friend. It's, <laughs> it's definitely your friend. Yeah. So, but yeah, these things help. Yeah, they do. Yeah, this took a turn. But yeah, back in the day, they would actually explode. We're here to say yes to safe canning, right? Yes. Hell yes to safe canning. I mean, my God. Maybe yeah. we should make a new, a new hashtag, right? Hell yeah. yes. If y'all love your husbands and want to make them sick, I'm not doing that, okay? Because we'll forget it's poison food, and they will eat it too, and we all die. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Somebody nope. needs to be able to get somebody to the, to the emergency room. If that happens. Yes. Don't be afraid of your food. If you're like, Oh, I'm not sure I did that. Right. Toss write it. it down. Toss you see, it. Remember Dale said we're the knuckle dragon club, right? I write down, I'm canning a pint. I forget what's in there. If you're running three, four canners, you forget what the hell's in it. So I'll write green beans. Right. And I don't count on my old lady memory. To remember how long I go with this, it'll tell you pints, however many minutes is, quarts, however many, I write it down. Yeah. Then I write after my vent, after I vented for 10 minutes, then my process, anything can happen. You know, I can have a stroke, can, you know, forget what, you know, whatever. Kevin walked in and he could fix it himself. So it's crazy. Okay. Joey had the same problem. See, the only thing that jiggles in my kitchen is me, says Suburban Hillbilly. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I yeah, love read, it. read the directions every time you can something. And it is fun to watch safe canners because we're like, okay, yeah, I write that down. Yes. Okay. Yep. But you can forget that 10 minute thing, people. Okay. You, I mean, oh, a lot of easily. Or I look at, if you look at the stove and you say, oh, I'll remember it's, it's 458. Oh, I'll remember that. I'll remember that at 508. I know I will. And then of course, five, you know, 506 comes around. Oh, was it a yes. six? Or was it an eight? Yes. We've got four timers, four timers yes. in our kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit of overkill, but if I've got two different or three different things going, I don't want to, I just don't want to take a chance. How about when you're going to a friend's house, like I'll remember her address and then you're, you know, you're driving to the address and then you hear the song eight, six, seven, five, three. <laughs> eight. You don't know where the hell you're going now because new numbers came in your head. Yeah. So it's 
exactly what you said. It'll say 458 on your stove. Say you go down the hall to go to the potty, wash your hands, put up some laundry, you come back, and now you can't remember what the hell time it was because now it's 515. This happens to me on a daily basis. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so that's why we so write it. So I down. think we're we're at six oh five. I first of all, I cannot thank you enough for. I mean, everything we just learned today. This was we didn't awful. accomplish anything except madness. We chased squirrels. We did, but it yeah. was fun squirrel chasing, and I think okay. everybody over here in the chat has enjoyed it. Okay, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I would love for you to come back anytime you want. You tell okay. me it is your floor. But okay. this was just a blast. And I am going to go, when we're off of this, I'm going to go watch that video, damn it. <laughs> and I'm going to put little post-its all over. Oh, I have a label-making machine. I oh. put labels on everything and just sit there and stare at it and study it. Get down with your bad self, Martha Stewart. And oh, I got this wow. handsome JJ before the chat started. Hey, hey. Oh, my God. I don't know. He's probably watching. He has a secret <laughs> crush on you now. So okay, yes, for that. Yes. Is oh, it Mouse? Is it Mouse? Yes. Oh, my goodness. He's it's so crazy. crazy lunatic. Yep. Who did uh, Burn used to love? And I don't think it was a Canon channel. And he would be down in the craft room or office and he'd go, is that so-and-so? Is that so-and-so? <laughs> like, yeah, he goes, how much longer on her video? Yeah, he just, there was something about her voice and she was easy to follow. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but I remember that always. I think she passed away. Okay, oh, but no. it is very funny, interesting how you can relate to somebody on something and they just, they get your goat for some reason, you know, they may not be the best at doing it, but there's something of it. Um, that's fun. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She went out and found it for us. Oh Lord. Yep. So we yep. will be watching that everybody. Okay. Thank you so much. So, so much. And thanks everybody who came into this now share this video because everyone needs to know that they need to can safely. I don't care what country you're in. I don't because the science has been proven. Yes. Okay. Our government put the money into it, whatever, but it's known now. It's known that you don't put a big old pot of water on without a lid and can anything you feel like it. Yep. Don't yep. do it. Don't, don't make anybody sick. Don't make your family sick. And if we ain't learned nothing from 2020, we might be <laughs> slow. We might be exactly. slow bros. Nobody wants to be a slow bro. Yep. You know? So I think that is the perfect thing at the end. Thank you, Prepping for Heaven. And thank you guys all so much for coming in. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Who knows who's going to be around? Well, let's clutch our pearls for everybody, shall we? Yes, clutch your pearls. <laughs> Keep it conservative and decent. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Hey, hey, uh, tomorrow there's going to be a lot of people on um, from like three until five or six my time. You've Ooh. got Ginger uh, at nothing, Not For Nothing Homestead. You've got um, Dale and Nana have the greatest, um, they have the greatest game night. It's so much fun oh. um, following Ginger. And then we have Tony live because his late night, we were all too old to stay up that late. So he decided to do it a little bit earlier on a Thursday. Thank you, Tony. And then one more thing. There's a craft and chat tomorrow morning with Ginger and Blue at Blue's. I'm um, a see. My brain is so dead right now because I'm so excited that Mouse Toes is on. Anyway, go in tomorrow morning to Not For Nothing Homestead and go watch the, the craft and chat because it's fun. So that's it. I had to give some shout outs there. Yeah. Forget, June is dairy month 23. Yes. Get right. you some milk. Don't, yeah. don't, put it, don't put it in a jar. No, no, please. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> uh.